Hello, good afternoon Adam. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Good to be here. Good to be here too. So the Future Technology Week, right? The first time the four shows are coming together. Like yes. Security, big data and internet of things. So what would you feel about it? Um, well, I think it's interesting that it's here in Dubai, first of all. I mean, one of the things that we're seeing a huge amount of here in Dubai is around digital cities, Internet of Things. So the, the two that really interest me being here together particularly are uh, JISEC for security and IOTX. I think that's a really nice complementary piece that comes together very well, particularly here. So if we see, like, if we talk about all the four shows, yeah, be it uh, JISEC or JIMEC or Big Data or Internet, uh, Internet of Things, at the end of the conversation, the center point is security, right? Yes. Be it any technology, security would be at the heart of every conversation. Yes. So what do you think? Like, uh, where do we stand in terms of the security market? It, you How mean, here, you mean here specifically geographically? The East, uh, yeah, the well, East, yeah I, I, I mean, I think it correlates with what I'm seeing globally at the moment. Security is there to reduce risks that companies and governments are going after. So for example, the, the big change that's going on for everybody, whether they're private sector or public sector, is digitization. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with digitization comes a certain amount of risk. Mm -hmm. so, so let's think a little bit about, well, what is digitization? Right. Well, it's organizations looking to, do, looking to work better with their customers or looking to improve their mm -hmm. internal processes, whether they're government or, or corporations. And so we see, I think we see a huge amount of that over here in particular. And how do they do that? Well, they use technology. They use things like cloud, for example, better agility to deliver new services internally or to customers. Mm -hmm. They use mobility, mm -hmm. better ways to reach people wherever they may be. Mm -hmm. And they use things like IoT, connecting different things as a way of improving the way their operation functions. Right. And all of these things uh, expand what we call the attack surface. There are broader ways that they can then be breached. It creates new areas of risk. Mm -hmm. So whilst they're pursuing great benefits, there are also some risks they're exposed to. Mm -hmm. Our job? is to help them reduce those risks. Right. So tell us about more, more about your uh, threat-centric uh, security. What are the key capa capabilities that your uh, threat-centric uh, security offer to the customers? Ab absolutely, but well, there's a few pieces here. Uh, and I think, you know, again, coming back to the theme of the shows that are here, one of them is also big data. This is very much around getting a collective visibility, mm -hmm. not silos of visibility across lots of different vendors' products, what our customers are challenged with is that they've got many, many different vendors and it's very, very difficult and complex for them to get a single collective visibility or view as to what's going on with regards to cybersecurity. What we do is we try to give them that collective view. We use the network to do that. That gives them things like NetFlow. We use the internet using DNS from our open DNS acquisition to give them a huge amount of big data they get access to. We can then augment that with threat-centric technology like next generation IPS or advanced malware protection AMP that we acquired through Sourcefire. And all of this gives them great visibility in a very integrated way. These products talk to each other, they tie together, not only to correlate across that visibility and to share information, but then also to enforce the decisions we make. And then on top of that, we also have cloud security as well. So very, very large cloud security capability. Cisco see about 30% of email traffic every day. Uh, we see 100 billion uh, web requests every day. Open DNS see 2% of web traffic every day. That's a huge set of data. And so as soon as we uh, prosecute something as a threat, as soon as we find a new threat, all of our customers are immediately protected wherever they may be. So really powerful from the network, all the way from the endpoint into the network and data center and up into the cloud as well. Very comprehensive, integrated set of visibility. So we are ent entering into an M2M world, right? Where like Gartner also predicts like, like billions of devices yes. would be connected to each other. The machines would be talking to machines. So in, in this particular case, yeah. is like end-to-end -end security a possibility? Like how far can we say that our enterprise is secure? Like is there a possibility for something like uh, entirely secure enterprise? Like. Okay, so it's a great question. So, so there's a couple of pieces. The first is that there are a significant number of devices connecting, about 500 billion devices connected by 2030. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of things connecting. And so we can't rely on manual processes and labor intensive ways of connecting all these things. It's too complex, it's too slow. Mm -hmm. So we need machine to machine. We need artificial intelligence to help us operate at the pace to detect threats, mm -hmm. but also to automate the way in which we respond to those threats and protect ourselves against them. So that's a hugely important part, I think, that, uh, that we'll see. Can, can an organization ever be 100% secure? secure? 
hard to say at the moment, right? It's a very dynamic landscape. There's this battle going on between the bad threat actors right. and, and the industry trying to do a better job on competing against them. And I think we're, we'll always need to be very vigilant about new and emerging threats. So it's the age of transformation, right? And CIOs have been taking a cent center stage in this entire transformation. They have been evolving with their roles and they are termed to be the next CEOs as well, like balancing yes. the business and security. So in, in this particular world, how CIO friendly are your uh, threat solutions? Yeah, I, I, it's a great question. And I think it's a huge opportunity for CIOs, CISOs to be relevant to the business because security, as I said, is about reducing risks so that companies are freed up to go and pursue their business opportunities with lower risk. So that's a great opportunity for them to be really, really business relevant. How relevant are we to them? As you'd expect me to say, we're very relevant. You know, we're not coming in and talking about a small product or a niche product or something you know, deep and technical. Yes, we can have those best of breed conversations with the technical buying centers, but fundamentally ours is a business proposition. Take a strategic approach, look holistically at some of the risks you're exposed to and have a strategy about reducing those risks. That's absolutely what Cisco are uniquely positioned to do. And at the same time, it allows organizations to reduce their complexity reduce their cost base, reduce their total cost of ownership and deliver a more efficient system rather than a collection of pieces that they're constantly paying more money out for. And if we have to give out a one security do and one security don't, what would you say? Yeah, so, so I think the, the security do is, you know, let, let's be holistic about our thinking here. Let's think about what we're trying to protect, how we're trying to accelerate the business strategy and what risks we're trying to reduce. And when we look at that risk, let's think about it holistically and have a strong strategy in place, not just for technology, but for technology, for people and for process as well. I think that's a really uh, important do.